Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today's job will be a Dinky 253 Daimler Ambulance. This is a uh, wonderful toy. It's got a huge bodied casting which uh, exactly matches the look of a Daimler Ambulance. This one is chipped up a fair bit and so it's going to get stripped and repainted and we're going to fix that bent axle and replace the tires. Whatever needs to be done, I'm going to do it. First step, as usual, is to remove the base. And I'm using my split point drill. This is a 3 8 drill. Uh, it works beautifully. It stays on center. I don't need to center drill. And I'm still able to get these rivets off. making everything easier for me and one step. So there the rivets are off but the body being squeezed was holding the base in place. So there I got it off. So the back the axle is held in by the body it's pretty bent up. And now onto the milling machine and put a little bit of cool tool. Basically it's a cutting oil. Uh, this makes the cutting tool more slippery. Uh, this metal is kind of chewy and if you don't put some kind of a cutting oil lubricant uh, it's going to stick to the cutting uh, edges of the drill and then it'll grab it and break the end of the drill off. I've done that a couple of times. So I'm pretty careful to make sure that it's always lubricated now. Now I've shortened the video. I actually put extra oil in there in the middle, but uh, I just want to speed the thing up a little instead of just watching me drilling. So the base is going straight into the uh, Evapo Rust, super safe rust remover. The theory is that these uh, bases were not painted, they're blued, and I'm seriously questioning that, at least on the models that I've been doing, because unless I go and I strip the paint, I'm finding that the evapo rust is not dissolving the finish, which you would expect from bluing, which is similar to rust. It's just a better looking rust. So now I'm tapping this is a 440 tap. It's a split point tap or sorry, a spiral point tap. So it's pushing the swarf down in front of it. So I don't have to uh, turn it backwards every quarter turn. Instead, I can go straight in. And in this case, I drilled deep enough that I can just use the ordinary tap and it makes a deep enough thread for those screws. So now it's time to match the paint. So uh, it'll come out the same color. And i got an empty bottle of white. So I'm gonna mix up my, my paint in that empty bottle. I've got yellow and I've got tan. Mostly it looks like a tan color. Uh, it's got to be a little bit lighter and a little bit yellower than the tan that I have from the uh, Mr. Hobby. So I'm going to mix the tan with uh, white in that uh, empty jar of white. And then I'm just going to add to it yellow until it turns into the color that the uh, ambulance starts out as. So there's a fair bit of mixing involved. The tan is a little bit whiter. There's not that much white left in that bottle. And so also I got to turn it yellower. And it's a funny process because you can see the difference and gradually the color that's in the jar gets closer to the color that's on the model. And that's the ideal situation because every once in a while I'm dealing with a color I just can't match. So I don't have enough white of the Mr. Hobby that's still in my jar of empty jar of white Mr. Hobby paint. So I go to the Tamiya paint and let's mix that in. Uh, 
they're both similar paints and uh, people do mix them together so we're gonna give that a try so that looks like a match and it's done so we put it aside for when it's time to paint I took the label off so we know it's the mixed paint so here's what I'm showing you is the is a bunch of the paint has come off that's paint that had rust underneath it and I've seen this in the past sometimes all of the paint comes off and that's because it had rust underneath it once you dissolve the rust there's nothing holding the paint so this one there are bits of paint that are on there and it looks like paint and so you can see I've got it into the boiling water and I'm going to strip the paint off of it that's that still was sticking to the metal so here goes the caustic soda I've gone outside to do this because I don't really want those fumes inside the house. So the hubs were in there. They all get a brushing with the brass brush. Flip them over. And I'm going to brush this one up as well. I brush it just by hand. I won't show you the entire process. There, I'm pretty much finished. Remember to subscribe to my channel and to like and to share. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. And you will find out when uh, my next videos come out. And it will help me get a little bit more popularity. So the body has a big seam down the middle at least the on the roof and so I'm going to smooth that out and I'm using the Bondo spot and glaze putty and that fills in a lot of the of the edge there you can see one half is higher than the other and then there's some other imperfections so I fill those up as well and here you can see there's still some paint little bits of paint flecks of paint that didn't come off so Whatever paint they were using or bluing or combination, it's very good stuff. It stays there even after you try and strip it. But it doesn't matter, it's the base. It's enough of it off that when you paint over top of it, it'll look just fine. So it gets the brass brush treatment. And there the base fits onto the body. I gotta check that because sometimes with bending and such it won't fit on there. So after a bunch of sanding and also cleaning off there's a, a seam that goes across the hood and across the fenders and it's unsightly and so I go in and remove them first with the file and then I go in with the sandpaper and I think I even used a little bit of putty up there. So it's quite a bit of time in preparing the body for, for its first coat of paint. You can see there is a few areas where there was you know, there's a weakness in the casting and rough surfaces so I want to smooth those out before I put the first coat of paint. So this is Tamiya White Fine Surface Primer. I like to use this stuff. It smells a lot so I've put a bigger fan into my spray booth to try and draw it out. And with the hubs, you got to paint both halves, so that's one half. Same thing with the base. This is the inside. I paint the inside first because I stick it on a magnet and it can damage the paint. So I don't care if it damages the inside, and so I do the outside last. So now I've got the model painted and I can find the little flaws and high points and I go in with my uh, micro mesh sanding paper. It's, it's designed for, for polishing 
plastic windows and other things that uh, it's it's an excellent uh, wet sandpaper basically but it's kind of on a rubber on a, on cloth so it's very flexible and very easy to use so here's the base again now the outer surface this is just a hardware store semi-gloss black paint and after sanding I go with another coat to cover what I exposed when I was sanded the the flawed parts out again so now for the finishing paint I've mixed up this paint and into the airbrush it goes and back to the spray booth so this time we put the finished coat um, or actually many coats of the color that we mixed up that's going to match the original color of this toy so I jumped ahead don't need to watch me spray painting the entire thing but this is at the point where I'm putting the final coat uh, the one that I need to look shiny so with all those sanding and repairs the finish is actually really really excellent So there we have it. Now I go in and I'm using the Tamiya paint because I don't have any more uh, Mr. Hobby paint. I've run out and I haven't had a chance to order new paint. But what I'm doing is I'm painting the parts that are going to be uh, going to have decals on them. And I'm going to be using transparent decals so I need a white background. One way is to uh, put a, a white decal in the background and then put a clear decal on top and any clear places like text on these ones uh, will wind up having white text because the white's going to show through so this is the first time I'm doing it with paint uh, instead of with a, a decal on the, in the background so we'll see if this is easier or more difficult than doing it with, uh, with a white decal so I've printed out uh, designed and printed out all of the, uh, the decals. I'm going to be doing something with this model. Uh, the, the dinky model the, has all the castings for the windows and everything and there was a corgi model done later on and the corgi model had uh, windows that were dark and I looked up pictures of the actual ambulances on the internet which is a wonderful resource and all of these uh, ambulances had some kind of dark tinted uh, windows that appeared black and the corgi model has those windows turned black so i'm i've decided i'm going to do what what i'm sure the people at dinky would have done but they couldn't afford to do it they couldn't afford to put the extra work into making all of these windows black uh, so they didn't they just uh, they just left them painted the same color as the rest of the body I mean they could have designed the casting so that there was uh, that the windows were open and then it would have looked more like the real ambulance so I'm just doing what the uh, what Corgi did so the windows I've put there and I'm also doing the cross I have a lot of trouble painting uh, cross on top of the casting. I found that out with the Bentley ambulance. It's a lot of work so I decided I'm going to give it a try using a decal instead. That's why I painted the cross white because otherwise the red of the cross would be changed, the color would be changed by the yellow background. So the other thing I'm doing is I'm adding a name of the hospital that this uh, ambulance belongs to. I know I'm going to get trouble from somebody because a lot of my viewers live in the UK. But actually, most of my viewers live in the UK and they know all the hospitals and they know Bedlam and probably Bedlam Hospital doesn't have ambulances. It's not that sort of hospital. But I'm having fun with the name. I just think it's cool to have a hospital named Bedlam and have a, have a whole word uh, named after a London hospital. So here I've got the painted 
part on the front. This was not done by Dinky, but uh, they they put the maybe they were thinking about adding a a label of ambulance on the front and a license plate on the back because it's in the casting, but they never did it. So I'm doing it anyway. If there's I put a a number plate above the above the rear doors which is what the original ambulances had and once again I'm filling in the uh, the back windows with the with the dark 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 color and here I've speeded it up time-lapse decal attachment so you don't have to watch me doing it all over again So now I've got a mixed up paint. Uh, I'm not using any color other than the uh, actual color and the the hubs on this model were red which matches the red cross on the model which is actually really beautiful and so I'm just using the Mr. Hobby paint and now I've got the Mr. Super Clear and I'm going over my paint and my decals on the model. And I'm really pleased with how this thing looks. It looks so much better than the actual original Dinky model. And I believe that Dinky would have done this, but for some reason it was going to be too complex for them. So they didn't do it. They made it much more simple, which is fine, but I wanted to improve it. So here we have the hubs. The back of the hubs have been painted red and it's time for doing some detailing. So this is how I like to do the headlights because uh, my hands aren't steady enough to paint perfectly round headlights. So I go in with this uh, El Cheapo Dollar Store Arch Punch and my hammer that I made as an apprentice and punch a couple holes into a piece of masking tape. And then I cut them out and those are going to be used to mask my headlights. So I've cut out circles and I've also split the circle because I don't have the exact size of the headlights. So what I do is I split that and then I can pull it over until it matches the size on the casting. So you can see I'm able to get it to go right to the edge of the of the uh, headlight and it built into the casting. And I've got to press this all around and I'm showing you a little bit of pressing it around but actually I spent a lot more time on it because on a previous model some of the some of the uh, chrome ink bled underneath the tape so I actually spent another 10 minutes pressing that tape in there and there you can see <laughs> the uh, silver paint got on there without being brushed on that's because i mixed up when the camera was on pause and when it was running so i thought it was running and i painted them anyway you got to see the uh, final effect so i go in with my uh, fine tamiya brush speed that up a bit and I'm painting it basically the way that Dinky had painted the trim so now I go in with my dot painter and paint the hood ornament so now I've decided I'm gonna put I haven't done this in a while I'm gonna add a windshield the additions to the model I think make it mandatory at least in my mind to put a, a front windshield in this or windscreen uh, so I've cut a piece of the plastic uh, that's packaging plastic from uh, soap containers that my wife buys at uh, Costco and it's great plastic I can cut it to whatever shape I want it's uh, it, it looks beautiful and here I'm gluing it in using my five minute epoxy from the dollar store. 
So now I got to hold it in there for five minutes. So obviously I'm not going to waste time showing that. But now we go to the back of the model. The front is, has dried while I was putting the uh, windshield in. And here I've got the tail lights. They're going to get red on top of the silver. And this is a new brush. I've, I bought five of these brushes on Amazon. They're tiny, tiny little brushes. And they're for artwork, but they're beautiful for doing this. So I'm trying them out. I'm trying different things. And I kind of like this brush. It's very nice. A tiny little stretch of bristles. So I have a lot of control over it. So back to the front. And the silver has dried. And I'm putting my patented white headlights which makes it look like the headlights are on. I, I, I just love this uh, this effect and so it goes on all my models now. So here I go in with the red for the tail lights. These are tiny little tail lights I don't know anybody could see if the ambulance was stopping or not. Must have caused a lot of accidents. So here I go in the petrol filler cap and then the uh, latches for the for the uh, passenger door and for the driver's door. Tiny little things to deal with. So time for doing the wheels. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you my technique. Uh, I, what I'm doing now is I'm preparing these ends with a little dimple in them, so it's easier to hammer them. So first I file the end perfectly flat, and I've got this uh, little uh, adapter for and, and inside the brass is the end of that uh, axle shaft and it goes in the lathe and I just go in with the center drill and it looks like I'm drilling a long way and, and it feels like I'm drilling a long way but I'm not drilling that much I need to get a little cavity in there so that for, for hammering there's a like a ridge you're gonna see when I pull this thing out So I've made this little collet adapter to fit the axle and there you can see I've created a dimple and here you can see it. I'll have a little, have a little closer look. And the idea is when I go to hammer that thing into a mushroom, it's a lot easier because I'm all I'm doing is I'm hammering down that rim instead of hammering all of the metal on the end of the axle. And I really hate doing that. Uh, hammering so this is making it a lot simpler so it goes into my vice grips that I've ground specially go in with my small hammer and you can watch how that dimple disappears Still a lot of hammering, so I'll speed it up. That way you can see how the, the little dimple disappears as the mushroom is formed. So I'm going to try and uh, make it more mushroom shaped uh, with, the, with the drill and the special tool. On it. It mushrooms it out a little bit. I'm not really thrilled with that, but the good thing is the, the wheel is held in really, really well. So for the for the rear, I don't have any mushrooms. That's uh, axle without mushrooms because it's held in by the bodywork. So it's ready to assemble.
So out come those uh, button head cap screws that have been painted the body color, which gives a nice effect when you put the base on. And now we're done. So let's remind you what we started out with. So there's the, uh, there's the ambulance. The wheel's bent right over. A lot of the paint has been chipped off, particularly in all the corners. And uh, it's not a complicated model, but it needs to be restored. So let's see what it looks like now. So the paint is restored. And I think it looks more beautiful than any of the the uh, Daimler Daimler uh, ambulances that Dinky pushed out of the factory. I think I made the improvements that they probably wanted to do, but for various reasons they couldn't afford to do it. And I think it looks just gorgeous. I once again I've fallen in love with this casting that at the beginning I thought was a bit of an ugly duckling. This is so much fun doing this because the best models are the ones that look crappy from the beginning and then I can make them beautiful again. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. I certainly enjoyed doing this model and I hope you'll come back again next time. So until then, be seeing you.